My name is Andrew Kwao, um, the founder and the um, director of um, Everett Films, um, the only UK uh, film um, distribution company when it comes to um, black content, especially in Hollywood um, and African films. We have here today Mr. Obi. Uh, we're going to have a, a, uh, a general conversation about its next project, uh, which is um, due to be premiered in the UK at some point, which we'll touch on, we will touch on based on that. Um, but for now, um, we're just going to have a conversation, get a um, get, get viewers to know what Mr. Obi does and why we are sitting here and having this conversation. Uh, Mr. Obi. Sir. How are you today? This, this old man is still alive, and that's a good place to start. We need you alive, please. <laughs> <laughs> we need you alive. So, so today, you and I are sitting here um, again. Um, I remember some years ago. We, 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 many years ago. Many years ago, the first time I met you, we were obviously talking about doing, going to do the same thing as in you know, Nollywood films, taking Nollywood into the um, cinemas for the first time ever. And that was the first time I met you. Obviously, we came, we were introduced to the project as obviously the, the, the main distributors yeah. in the UK. Yeah. And that was when I met you. Yeah. Um, give us a sense of what you've done so far to this mm. point, if you don't mind. Mm. Well, my name is Obi Emelanyi. I'm a Nigerian-born, UK-based um, filmmaker. Uh, I call myself a, a teller of African stories, uh, quintessential African narratives mm. with um, universal soul because it's important to not just um, appeal to our primary audience, but to be able to kind of take our storytelling and our culture global. Just like music is happening, African music is blowing, so too is African cinema. Mm. And the best way to travel is to remain authentic, mm. authentically African, but at the same time, opening ourselves to be more palatable to to Western audiences and, and, and the world at large. So I'm telling African stories. I, I, I live in London, but I work out of Nigeria. And the aim is to, is to keep drumming and keep banging on those doors um, until either the door falls apart or somebody opens from inside. So um, we, we started this journey on this scale with the Mirror Boy, uh, a project that is so close to my heart. Um, I, I do remember that title <laughs> very well. It's a history, isn't it? It, it? it is. It has a lot of history behind it. And, and coincidentally, it's about almost exactly 10 years ago that we, wow. s we had that conversation. You know, life has a way of happening in patterns. Mm. Um, that we had the conversation about the Mirror Boy and about the release and, and the, the premiere at the Empire Cinema Leicester Square, yep. which I would say is still to date my proudest moment. Um, maybe I would surpass that with this new project because that's the hope um, that you don't live in the past, you live in the present. And don't spoil it for the audience. Okay, 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 okay come down, come down. <laughs> so, so we did The Mirror Boy, which went very well, very seminal film, kind of changed the, the paradigm as far as um, African storytelling is concerned because for the first time we told the story from the point of view of a young boy mm. and, and that was refreshing and people embraced it globally. It's still the top 10 in the most watched films uh, uh, on Netflix from Nollywood, mm. um, in spite of being 10 years old. So mm. it, is, it is a strong project, still, still remains. I got an email yesterday from somebody who's saying, why haven't I watched this film? I just watched it and I'm, they, were, they were waxing lyrical about it. But you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the start of this journey to internationalness. That, that we're doing and and that's the first time we worked with you we also worked with um, Everett films on last flight to abuja which also in its own way was uh, a groundbreaker mm. uh, for the first time we started telling technical stories we mm. we crashed a plane mm. in a nigerian mm. film and mm. and i remember very vividly when i first announced that i was going to make a film where that involves a plane crash and uh, somebody wrote me on online on facebook at the time and said you guys haven't crashed a car properly <laughs> and, you, and you want to go and crash a plane so really? that was the that was the level of skepticism that 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 really greeted that ambition but mm. by god's grace we were able to present something that is nowhere near perfect but represents a huge stride in terms of visual realism in mm. nollywood 
Uh, and on the back of that, we did that will be done a collaboration with Iroko TV, which uh, is on their platform and premiered at the um, BFI IMAX in Waterloo. Um, after that, we did Oxford Gardens, which was at the BAFTAs. Um, and then for the last five years, I've been working on a project that has been very, very close to my heart that is eventually coming to light. Fantastic. We're here basically, obviously, we're, we're, we're talking about one particular film yes. that we're about to do something or you're about to do something. We are about to do something. <laughs> so give us Bad Badamasi. Give us a, a brief understanding or a brief information of what Badamasi is all about. So Badamasi Portrait of a General is uh, a biopic. Mm on the life and times of one of Nigeria's most controversial leaders, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, retired, who ruled Nigeria from the 28th of August, 1985, to the 27th of August, 1993. Mm. Those eight years to the exact day, those eight years were some of the critical um, for many for good and for some others in Nigeria for bad. Some of the critical period in Nigerian history in terms of economic development, in terms of politics and in terms of social and, um, and, and cultural well-being. Um, so when I was considering my next project, after the relative success of my earlier films, mm. I, I thought about, you know, how do I tell a story that just by its subject raises my head above the parapet? Mm. And I said, it has to be a biopic. Who amongst Nigerians would present an interesting topic? Interesting on several levels, on the level of you know, relevance on the level of controversy or mm -hmm. intrigue and interesting on the level of drama, sheer drama in their life. And, you know, the, the list is not long. And at the top of that list is Babangida, fondly called IBB. So the next step was to find a way to reach him to to, because I didn't want to make a spoof film without his knowledge and before maybe... You, bef before you go in there, okay. before you, before you okay. go in there, okay. like I said, this man has too much knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> One question can take us... Okay, okay come down, down come down, come down. Before we go in there, <laughs> okay. you, 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 you mentioned that um, this film is, has some most elementary aspects of democracy yeah. in Nigerian history. Yeah. yeah. Um, consider that I am not a Nigerian. Mm. What would you say that could connect or educate me in the prospect of what we're talking about here and what, how that, how, how but I must relate to it. <clears throat> I would say for a non-Nigerian, but I must say is a, a study in leadership. Mm the thanklessness of leadership, the impossibility of leadership, the responsibility of leadership, and the mistakes that are bound. You know, my, my dad those days would say that everything ends in failure. And, mm. and, and, in, and to rise to military power, it, it, you rise in a blaze of glory. Mm. But to exit military power, if you are alive, that is, it ends in shame, it ends in regret, it ends in hurt, it ends in all sorts of negatives. So that is the journey of this man. He, he was born uh, in the northern part of Nigeria into a, you know, a decent family. But by the age of 14, he lost both parents and, and had, to, had to fight his way using his personal charm and using his intelligence. To, to join the army and, and work his way from, from the very bottom to the top. 
um, and ended up becoming the, the president of Nigeria at the age of 44. His journey is really symptomatic of, of the, 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 the early years of independence for most African countries. They were battling the, the neo-colonialism and the problems of the IMF and the World Bank. They were fighting economic um, uh, uh, regression. They were fighting political problems. They were fighting wars sometimes. Mm. Mm. Uh, and they were trying to define uh, an economic and political structure uh, for the country. And, and, and in his case, he, he started experimenting with elections. Um, some people say he over-experimented with elections. Mm. Um, and and the real the real story to emerge from those experiments um, was June 12, when right. what they consider to be the most the fairest election in Nigerian history right. was cancelled due to some political shenanigans, um, but. He was the head of government. He was the president at the time, and the buck stopped with him. And, and to give you an instance, there's a quote in the film mm -hmm. where he, after the cancellation of the election, he goes home and, and brings his two sons together and tells them that, and I quote, mm -hmm. I have just done something that will haunt me for the rest of my life. Wow. He knew. He knew when he did it that he was never going to recover from it. Wow. And it's taken him... 28 years to even speak about it because he's kept a dignified silence about it. And what I did when I got his interest was to say, for the healing to happen between you and history, for you to find inner peace with yourself, mm. you have to tell the story mm. from your point of view. Mm. Because a lot of things happened in different places. You can only control what you saw. Mm. So you tell the world, this is what happened on my, on my, on my watch and I surrender, I did this wrong, I did this right. That's all you need to do. And you let history and you let the future and the present be the judge of whatever happened. That's the only way. So you have to, if you watch this film and you are comfortable watching it, mm. then I failed as a filmmaker. Mm. Because this film is meant to touch your soul, make you cry, make you regret even talking to me. Wow. But unless that happens, people would believe the myth and all the stories that they heard through Chinese whispers about you and about June 12th. And the myth will continue. So put your side of the story, which might not be the absolute truth. And I make that point because it is only what you see from life is about perspectives. I totally agree. So from where you are, this is what happened. Somebody else will say from what they, where they were, this is what happened. And somewhere in the middle will be the, the truth. So. That is the basis of the story. So as a, as a non-Nigerian, the, the story of Badamasi is essentially a, a, a study in, in, in African politics. You know, the, you? The, the rise and fall, or in his case, the rise and step aside of, of, uh, of a leader in a country where everything is difficult. W would you say this film attracts or has elements that coincides with Africa democracy itself? Yes. I believe Nigeria is so big that every, people call it a microcosm of, of the whole of Africa because you find every aspect, every tribe in, essentially in Africa has a, a, a representative mm. in, in Nigeria. Um, and most things that happen in Nigeria, it's like Nigeria and Ghana. It's, we are essentially the same. It's just <laughs> yes. artificial borders that, that yes. were created by the, by the colonialists. Mm. Otherwise, we, we are the same. So, so if, you, if you look at what's happening across Africa, there is a homogeneity about it. And, you know, the political problems, it's, it's essentially planted everywhere. It's the same. So anybody that sees the journey of Nigeria as a country, can relate it to the journey of any other African country. Okay. Um, you could say somebody like Jerry Rawlings, who passed away very recently, yeah. is in a similar position with yeah. Babangida okay. because of his schools that he planned, but because of the plans that he also made for, for, for the country. In, in, in Jerry Rawlings' case, he's better 
better accepted generally by the Ghanaian people. In Babangida's case, mm. he's a very divisive figure in the sense that half the population loves him to death and the other half wants to stone him to death. We'll come back to that. Interesting you mentioned that. We'll, we'll definitely come back to that. Now, um, from my perspective and understand what you're saying, it, it, it seems that you did a very thorough research and you probably picked this particular film or story to tell from a personal point of view. Correct me if I'm wrong. Which part of Nigeria are you from again? I am Igbo. Okay. Yes. Is Babangida Igbo as well? Nope. Fantastic. So what attracted, why, why this particular story? So, so I was speaking to uh, uh, an interviewer in Nigeria uh, the other day and I said that I come to this story from the most neutral of positions, mm. from a very uh, objective position that I am not from the northern part of Nigeria and have no interest in the hegemony of the north maintaining leadership in Nigeria. Mm. I am not from the southwest of Nigeria, the Yorubas, who were disenfranchised literally by the June 12th saga. Mm. I am from the southeast, an Igbo man who lives in London, who has no interest whatsoever, who has no vested political or partisan interest in the politics of Nigeria. Mm. What I'm doing is essentially putting a mirror in front of our society to say, look at thyself. And the society produces the leaders. Mm. And the leader is a reflection of that society. So if we see IBB, his greatness and his failings, we see ourselves, our greatness and our failings. Is that what so, attracted you to this story? Oh, yes, yes. It, 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 I think as a filmmaker, you, you, you are looking for subject matter that is evocative. Are you pushing boundaries here? Very much so. Risky business. Mm. In fact, it's, a, it's more of a, a financial risk than it is a personal risk. <laughs> because, okay, for argument's sake, I chased him for four years to make the film. And I eventually four made, years. made the film. And I'm, I'm in my second year of waiting to release the film in Nigeria. Because some people feel that that story shouldn't be told. Wow. And, and the people that are saying that, I don't know them. They haven't come to me outright. They have been whispering from the background, from the shadows, tell, trying to stop the release of the film. And I've listened because, you know, we are dealing with a, an African country where people can disappear. Mm. And while I am confident and bold and courageous, I have a young family. So mm. I, 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 I pandered to the whims and caprices of those dark voices from dark corners not to release the film theatrically in Nigeria when I was supposed to in 2019. Okay. I deferred to them. Okay. But I now planned a more, a less confrontational means of release, um, maybe online. And even that would not work because somebody is trying to stop it. So it gets to a point where what I call a confluence of circumstances would come together to, to make it possible for something that has been hidden mm. to come out in the open. And I think that's what happened with this premiere. The, the, the release of this film, be it in the UK for now, mm -hmm. is the coming together of a set of circumstances that, that have made it possible for the release to happen at this time. And everything in life, I must say, is just about timing. That I have always known, even with the delay, um, which has been economically hurtful to me, um, even with the delays, I've always known that in its right time, this film would emerge. And when he emerges, it would just not be an ordinary film release. It would be a historical, political, controversial, artistic mm. event. And that's what we're shaping for. Wow. Interesting. Now I'm beginning to understand why June the 12th, <laughs> you picked that date. Yes, a, a lot of people have, have asked me why that date. Mm. What's the significant message in there? So, so June 12th was 
the dates when the election that IBB cancelled, that is the date of the election. That was the date the election held in 1993. Is it argumentative? No. Or it's a fact? It's a fact. So that was the date of the election. The election happened on June 12, 1993. It's a Saturday. And just like I told you, things happen in patterns. Our premiere is happening on a Saturday, Absolutely. June 12, 2021. Mm -hmm. So the, when the election was cancelled, Nigerians did not accept it, particularly the Yorubas. And okay. protests started because the, the, the gentleman that won the election was a Yoruba man. Okay. So the protest started. Before, before mm. you go there, mm. you, you, you mentioned that you are Awza. I'm Igbo. Igbo, sorry. Yeah. You're Igbo. Yeah. So you have Igbo mm. and you have Yorubas. And the Hausas. And the Hausas. They're the main three tribes. There are many more okay. tribes, yes. And which part of... You are, what about uh, Babangida? Babangida is Hausa. Okay. Then right. the Abiola, the guy that won the election, is Yoruba. Mm. So, Carry on. So I, I, I couldn't be more re removed from the drama, mm. of the political drama, mm. of the mm. you know, ethnic tug of war that mm. is happening. Mm. So, which is why my position, like I said, bar the editorial choices that I have to make as a storyteller, my position is as neutral as they come. Mm. Because I have no vested interest. Mm. And, and, I, and, I, and I, by the time I, I had access to Babangida, I told him that I needed a free hand to tell this story. Because if you want to do a PR, go on Al Jazeera, do a press release. Mm. But this is not a PR exercise. This is a factual story that I'm taking poetic license to tell it in such a way that, it, that it's enjoyable for people to watch. Because they say he's written a few books or a few books have been written about him. Mm -hmm. But if you want to hide something from a black man, they say, put it in a book. <laughs> so those books haven't been read. And with the advent of Nollywood and the, the, the strides we've made globally in, in the number of eyeballs that we attract, Absolutely. this is an opportunity to tell that story in such a way that it is, it is digestible to the people in two hours instead of maybe reading the book over 10 years and never even finishing it. So we put it in a form that they can digest. But to do that, I had to make calls. So my position has been very, very neutral, very objective. You know, um, uh, what was I, I was saying? What was I saying so before? We're talking about the, the premiere dates and everything. So, so June 12th is a pivotal date. So when, when the people were marching, because the, the, the demonstrations lasted months, Okay. In, in 1993. In fact, when I was coming to the UK, I nearly missed my flight because the demonstration blocked the road to the airport. Wow. Um, and, and I came in Ju July 1993. You know, so the demonstration happened all the way until, sep until, until August. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Babangida in one of the quotes said, <clears throat> I never knew that our people had the appetite for such prolonged anger. Because then in Nigeria, there is a there's a laissez-faire attitude. You, you offend them, they, they make noise, and the next morning they go back to work. Everything goes back, back, back to normal. Mm. There's a way of snapping back to, 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 to norm, no matter what has happened the day before. But in this case, they refused to snap back. They mm. came out every day. He was hounded out of government, not with guns or, or mortars or tanks, but by a bunch of youths who refused to give up until something happened. So. When they were chanting in the streets, they were saying, June 12, on June 12, we stand. Okay. So June 12 kind of became embedded into mm. the psyche of the country. Right. And, and what now happened was that when he now gave up office, handed to somebody else and, and stepped aside, which is unheard of in a, in a military government, when he steps aside, a, a, um, a bacha that took over f eventually from him, you know, to cut a long story short, the mm -hmm. Abiola guy that won the election died in prison. Okay. So now the people that, that, that are um, sympathetic to the Abiola cause, to the Yoruba cause, or to even the, the cause of democracy in Nigeria, adopted June 12 as the day to remember all the bad things that happened. Okay. And a few years ago, the, the present government in Nigeria made it Nigerian Democracy Day. Okay. So, so the question is, why June 12th? It's like asking a, a Hollywood filmmaker who made a film about
for argument's sake. I'm not, I'm not drawing any parallels here. But a, a Hollywood filmmaker who, who made a film about Osama bin Laden. Okay. And you say, why release it on, on September 11th? Mm. Because mm. the date is synonymous with the man. Absolutely. In, in, in the case of June 12th, Babangida, uh, let me tell you, Abiola is the victim of June 12th. He's the guy who was disenfranchised. Don't spoil the film here, please. <laughs> I hope you're not spoiling no, it. No, no, I'm not spoiling it. I'm not spoiling <laughs> it. These are, these, are, these are things that exist in history already. Fantastic. They are in the public domain. Fantastic. No. Okay. So, so the film prides itself in not replicating what's already in the public domain, okay. which, is why, which is why the input of somebody who's the main architect of those events is important because he, he was the, the, the author of June 12th, all the things that happened in June 12th. But up until now, nobody has managed to get him to tell them what happened, okay. who said what. Okay. So for the first time, he has shared with me mm. in a fly on the wall kind of documentary way that this is what happens. This, this is what was said by this. And, and he was, when he was saying this, he, he had his son next to him, to him and whatever he forgot, his son reminded him. So it's a very detailed um, account of what happened, not just June 12, because this film transcends June 12. Okay. But June 12 is topical because, you know, that is what his legacy has been tainted by. Okay. And the more, the more he explains his side of the story, the more he would probably strengthen people's beliefs about him or maybe convert one or two people to thinking, this man might have met well, but he made a mistake. He's, he's a... He's a is a flawed man, just mm. like all of us. Okay. I think we've touched quite a lot of um, stories and impacts about democracy and the mm. stories and why you picked it. Mm. Now let's talk a bit more about the film yeah. and the events. Yeah. And, and I'll start by saying, um, I've seen a few um, um, posts on Instagram um, about the, the cast you've mm. picked. Give us some sort of insight and why you picked those, the, 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 those characters, please. So, um, I, I, I said in one of those posts that casting the lead in a biopic is, is, has to be reduced to a fine art mm. because you need an actor who has a, a strong reputation to carry the film, but who is not too big to usurp the role that he's playing. You need an actor who has a, a, a certain conviction about their craft, but also remains flexible and malleable so that you can adapt them to what the role offers. You need an actor that, ha that shares some similarities in, in physical attributes with the, with the person, the subject, without looking like a caricature of them. Mm. Um, and any Nanwigwe kind of was made for this role in terms of his physical attributes, his physique, in terms of his height, in terms of his experience, uh, and in terms of his exposure in the industry. And, and, and he played out of his skin in this role. Um, and to give you an example that for the first time he got nominated in the Africa Movie Academy Awards uh, for Best Actor last year. He didn't win it, but this is the first time he's getting a nomination and it's testament to the, how he managed his Igbo, he's not okay. a Hausa, okay. and, and for him to adapt his, in fact, he became so good at it that the Hausas on set were wondering, what's going on? You know, because he, 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 he studied the man, the mannerisms, the little quirky things about him just came out. And, and you know, I knew this was a really seminal performance from him. And, and I can't, you know, I feel, I feel I'm doing him a, dis, a, dis, a disservice by not releasing this film early because mm. he needs this film to establish himself. In fact, not just him, a lot of people that worked on this film in front of camera, behind the camera, need this film to, to get onto the next level. To, to give you an example, the, the young boy, when we shot the mirror boy mm -hmm. in, um, in Gambia, the, the young camera assistant that came with the camera from Nigeria, mm -hmm was the DP on Badamasi. Wow. He, he, and he's never shot a feature length film before. He was doing music videos and I gave him an opportunity because I have a history with him. And I'm that kind of guy who likes to take risks with people. And, and so, so there are people who, who are counting on this film to come out 
so that they can get onto the next level in their careers. That's why I can't wait for people to see this film. Okay, so now, if we, the, the concept here is obviously World Red Carpet Day, mm. events, yeah. um, 12th of June, yeah. um, I believe uh, at the London um, O2, yes. iconic, the iconic... Iconic London O2 ex exactly. Cine World, yes. Um, how can one assets tickets or information about this event? Okay, so, so th this, is a, this is an exclusive event. This is not, you know, all commerce affair. Mm. This is an exclusive event that is the very first, and, and, I, and I say this very cautiously, the very first red carpet event in the UK post-COVID. Mm. And there are lots of people, not Nigerians, not even Africans, who, who want to come to the red carpets to flaunt their stuff because it's been a long time since they, since they did it. I totally agree. Um, and, and we have a, a strong list of invited guests, um, but there are also few, um, I call them coupons. I'm playing the, the pawn on coup. Um, so, so, so there are a few coupons. <laughs> I like that. But <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> there are a few, there are a few that's coupons, there are a few coupons <laughs> available on Eventbrite. Uh, you know, uh, without having to give the whole, the whole uh, URL, mm. you, they, they just go to Eventbrite.co.uk and search Badamasi. Get a get a ticket. Come. There is a you know because of COVID nineteen protocols, the cinema will not be full capacity. Mm. So we, we, we are we have limited numbers to work with. We have limited tickets. If you want to be part of this, which I think every every person who has an interest in, in African Africanness, mm. uh, whether you're married to an African or you have African children or you have African friends, you have to come to understand what is what is our past because without an understanding of the past we cannot move forward. I personally feel this, pro this particular title we're talking about has a huge interest, especially from Nigeria. And you did mention earlier on how there's been several incidents to um, downplay or stop the project from going forward. Yeah. What are you doing to, 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 to make sure that the, 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 um, the cinemas or the people in Nigeria can watch this film? Uh, what are you prepared to do? So, I have, um, somebody sent me a message the other day and said, you've got balls. Mm. That they can't really fathom why, how I am able to, to take on a subject like this. I said, because I have the authorization of the principal, the man who I'm using his name, he's told me his story, he has a right to tell his story, and there are people who are incidental in that story. They're not central to it. They're just on the outskirts of the story. But they are mentioned nonetheless. And these mentions are from the perspective of the principal who is the, at the center of the story. So. It's it's um, it's it's been it's been a show of courage to to come this far, and with all the restrictions, with all the attempts to suppress the release of the film, I've I've been strategic. I haven't said, you know, let's take them on head on head on and release this film and damn the consequences. No, I've been patient for nearly two years of finishing the film spending all of that money, all of that energy, all of that sweat, all of, that, all of those tears and blood, and you sit on your film that you've just finished, that you love so much, that kind of came out almost better than you dreamt it. Mm. And you have to sit on it, just waiting for the right time. Mm. And, and, and they say time heals all wounds. When the time is right, the right set of circumstances would happen that would mean that whatever is covering the film, their, their arm would ache and they would take off their arm and people will see the film. And there's a little bit of it that has happened to give us the impetus to even do the premiere in London. And the expectation is that once the premiere happens in London and the 
post-event PR is continuing even before the event happens in London with the PR that we're generating right now. The hope is that some of those forces keeping us down will relent. Mm. One, because uh, it becomes an unstoppable train or because they discover that actually there's nothing to worry about for them. Mm. You know, because this film doesn't attack anybody particularly. Mm. It is just the statement of fact from the point of view of one man who was integral to the story of Nigeria. And you might not like what it says, but it hasn't been set out to offend anybody. So it's, it, the expectation, as far as I'm concerned, the hope is that sometime during the course of this release in London, somebody would say, you know what? There's actually nothing wrong with this film. Maybe people should see this film. Mm. And that is the hope. And I hope, I sincerely pray that it happens that way. Because I think in some way, some of the, the platforms, that the international platform that we're speaking to are beginning to relent, are beginning to thaw in their, in their thinking about taking on the film. Because at some point, it was, it was looked upon like taking on the films means taking on the Nigerian government. That couldn't be further away from the truth. And if we have this release in London, maybe everybody will come to that realization that this is just a film. This is just a story. Now, obviously, after the premiere, the film travels on. Yeah. Um, what has been some of the challenges you've had for these particular titles? Uh, apart from finding, obviously, the finance to make it, a lot of people thought that the, the, the president would give me money to make the film. If, he? You, if, it was a, if it was a PR exercise, he well, would don't have. Answer that, but if it was a PR exercise, he would have given me money to make it. But it's not. Mm. I had to make an independent film. And to, to exercise my independence, I had to find my money from mm. somewhere else to make the film. The, the first challenge was getting the permission to do it, finding the money and shooting the film. I, I finished the shoot, came back to London, went into the edit room, didn't like what I saw, rewrote the script, went back to Nigeria, reshot, reshot it. It had to be right. It's not one of those things that you say, oh, I did my best. No, it, it had to resonate. It had to hit the marks. It, 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 otherwise, why bother? So, did you push boundaries for this particular type of film? Oh, you, many, many boundaries. In terms of, in terms of um, visual effects, which it was nominated in visual effects at the AMA Award last mm -hmm. year. Um, but, but in terms of choreography of 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 uh, scene design on and you know showing war and demonstration and, and 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 that worked very well because i went back to university of nigeria Asuka where i studied and got the permission of the university to shoot on campus so i had a, a control of a bunch of extras who were very enthusiastic oh. but who would stop when i said cut so so <laughs> so it meant that when you say action and you want them to to jump on cars and burn things but when you say cut everybody becomes normal again and, and and that was that was that was something that you know so so we had to simulate war we had to simulate cool we had to simulate you know uh, and we pushed boundaries with this it's not just the political boundaries we're pushing it's it's the artistic the artistic boundaries, the, the, the boundaries of visual realism, the, the, the boundaries of sound design, the boundaries of music, because the, the American composer for the, the original score of wow. the film, it's a guy from North Carolina that I've never met, mm. you know, he, he, he did a bloody excellent job with, with, with the music. And in most Nigerian films, there will, will be a small guy with a keyboard that composes something. No, this is orchestral. This is big time music film music wow. and those are the boundaries that were pushed and you know somebody asked me the other day what it takes to make a successful film mm -hmm. there are aspects there are factors that contribute to the success of a film you, and are you all you need to notes? do are you reading my notes i'm not reading your notes <laughs> all you need to do is to tick <laughs> as many of those factors as possible mm. and then you stand the chance of making a successful film but there is no formula if there was a formula i would bottle it i sell it and not even make films at all great I've seen a few posts and things on social media. Yeah. Where, where can you direct one to go and, and get more information about this film, apart from the, um, the Eventbrite site? 
So we have a we have social a media handle, social media handles, everything at Badamasi Film. Just search Badamasi Film um, on all platforms: Facebook, Instagram, or, or, or search my name. My name is OBM Elonye. Search me, you'll find everything about about the film. Or search Eni who's the lead actor. Mm -hmm. You'll find everything about the film. I think the film that we're dealing with, the subject matter that we're dealing with, I am here. One or two other f people from the behind the scenes are going to be here. The film by itself is a greater event than myself and Enyinna or whoever else is involved. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Nollywood fanatics are watching you. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them in relation to this particular film? That um, Nollywood has come home. Mm. We've been making little strides, sometimes two steps forward, one step backwards. But we've been learning. And Badamasi represents a culmination of most of those learnings. All the things we've learned about storytelling, about script writing, about visual effects, about cinematography, about editing. All of those things have come together in this. So if you liked The Mirror Boy, the uniqueness of the story, if you liked the, the risk and the boldness of Last Flight to Abuja, if you liked the, 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 the magic of, of Oxford Gardens and, and or you like living in bondage and all the stuff in it, the spiritual mm. stuff in it, mm. all of those are, all of them are encapsulated in this one film. It is well made, it is well pitched, it is well, 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 ready to be enjoyed by all of you and all you have to do is show interest before the tickets run out <laughs> well thank you very much obi um i'm very pleased that we've done this um as average we're going to play our parts um and i believe um we're playing our parts you are so we expect the fans and the viewers and everyone to come and support this beautiful story thank you and so um thank you very much obi thank you and we should do this again Oh, there's, the time comes. there's uh, projects in the queue. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Saka Ia Zuma took a wound in his suit. I'm a bandit soldier. We recognize that the government. We are civilians. Our military needs the consent of the people to govern. We do not intend to rule by force. Something is not right. I am not supposed to control what the judges do. Stopping Neck from holding the presidential elections on June 12, 1993. The judiciary is making a nonsense of all our efforts. Excuse me. What must we do? You have messed up. I have just done something that will haunt me for the rest of my life.